What if I told you that everything in your life was a metaphor? What if I told you that believing that and leaning into it had the potential to make your life better? Now, what, what do I mean by that? What do I even mean by a metaphor? Really, it's something that represents something else. An, an image, a picture, a word, something that means more than what it is. And meaning, subjective, of course, we can all create and intuit our own meaning from anything. And doing so could be very useful for you, depending, of course, on how you do it and if how you do it serves. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples. And to me, these are quite profound. To me, these examples that I have from today are pretty powerful, at least for me and my own transformation that I'm going through right now. So for the last little while behind the scenes, when I'm not here on this screen talking at you and shouting, I've been going through some stuff. I've been in a bit of a state which many would quite easily judge. I could quite easily judge myself for it. And I gave myself that full permission. I've been in it all good. I'm now very ready to come out and coming out of it quite suddenly. And I'm really enjoying that process. To me, it's, it's a reset. I'm, I'm fresh, I'm brand new, I'm relearning Jack, becoming who I wanted to be once again. Very exciting. I feel very good about it. And I might add it's going very well. So far, which again, I feel pretty thrilled to report. Now, you don't care about that. What you might be interested in is how I'm using the things in my world around me to accelerate that process of transforming and, and whatever else. So as part of what's been going on for me, I got into a bit of a funk, stopped caring as much about my appearance. It's very common when we get into like depressive states. It's a very common association people are in a depressed state. One of the things is they stop caring about their appearance so much. Everything becomes a lot more effort in general, such as hygiene and self-care. And the amount that we care about the world and everything kind of decreases uh, as well. So it makes sense that often people become a bit more ratty, disheveled, whatever words you might want to use. I grew a little bit of a beard, my hair got out of control. I didn't like it, but I didn't really care enough yet to actually do anything about it. Now, in the last couple of days, big shifts have occurred. Now I do care, and as part of that, I've had a shave, I've had a haircut, and I'm feeling so much better for having done so. These actions represent something to me. They are about me seeing in the mirror a new version of myself. It's about me removing some crap to have this fresh, new, brand new face, literally, to get back into living. They say that hair carries energy. You may have had the experience of having a haircut and, and as they cut certain pieces away, it can be quite a powerful thing. You can have some really strong emotions come up, Especially if you grew that hair during a time that maybe there was some pretty hectic stuff going on. When it's removed, you will feel quite a release if you're sensitive and attuned enough, which may or may not be you. Anyway, that's a profound thing. And it represents a resetting, but I don't just want to, again, say, hey, guys, I got a haircut. Isn't that cool? No, I have bigger things today. <laughs> when I left the house, when I stepped out of the house this morning, I noticed something very peculiar. Now, the house that I'm in right now is a house that I've been in for nearly two decades. I'm completely over it, and that's why we've just sold it, and that's fantastic. As part of all of this, there's this creeper outside, like a vine, not a person, a vine that creeps up and wraps around the walls. This thing is huge. It's been there for the whole time we've been at this house, literally decades. This gigantic thing grew, grew all the way around. And we kind of never really did anything about it. Maybe we didn't care that much. Maybe it didn't occur to us because it had just always been here ever since we moved in. But it wasn't really that nice. It required a lot of growth and maintenance because it was always growing. It had to cut it back constantly and shape it into something halfway attractive. As it crawled up, it frequently damaged the paint 
and pulled things down. It was really actually sucked. <laughs> and this morning when I woke up, yesterday having shaved all of this off of my face, I stepped outside and peeled off of the wall was this creeper. Perhaps its weight overnight had just pulled itself off. <laughs> it had literally just peeled away. And underneath, instead of pulling off paint and chipping and damaging things, was a completely fresh, uh, beautiful <laughs> exterior, untouched. I couldn't really believe it. <laughs> and to me, it is useful and beneficial to lean into this model, model this metaphor that that represents of, of a uh, crap on the outside, something holding me back, pulling me down, deteriorating me that I'd tolerated for such a long time, being pulled away to reveal a beautiful, fresh face underneath, the tabula rasa, the clean slate. Something to begin again with. So the house is sold and moves on to its new owners and its new life and all of that, and I wish them all the best. That's a beautiful metaphor. That's something I can lean into that saves me. And today, as I got so excited about that, I went, oh, this is a video, cool. And I felt motivated to, to make one. So I went and I charged my phone, which is what I film on. And as I got ready and I set up the light and all of this stuff, got ready to shoot, I pulled my phone away. And as I did, it caught something. <laughs> now, as part of this little funk that I've been in, I've been drinking a little bit too much, at least by my own standards and probably by some other people's standards as well. Now, I'm not thrilled with that, and I'm now very ready to move on. Today, as I pulled my phone off the wall, the cable that I was charging it with caught on a wine glass. Pulled it off the wall and smashed it. Now this isn't just any wine glass, this is the only wine glass in this house because it was kind of emptied completely for sale. And yesterday, as part of me leaning into wanting to, to cut back and make some changes, I wanted to start changing some behaviors. So my new coach encouraged me to get some masking tape and write on the glass some prompts so that instead of picking it up and having a drink, I would see these things and have the choice to go and do these activities instead. This is all part of my commitment to reduce my drinking. <laughs> Another thing that we set up were me, some structures that encouraged me to ask myself who I needed to become. And this morning when I lay in bed after again having had some wine last night, but not as much because I was just still playing with that and seeing my relationship to it change, I woke up, this reminder came in, and I asked myself, who do I need to be? And the thing that came through instantly was sober. This morning, seeing the wine bottle from last night and the glass and feeling a profound disinterest has been very wonderful. This glass is one that I have... It was something that someone left with me, someone quite dear to me that I think of often. This was theirs and they left it with me and I've been one day telling myself, oh, I'll give it back to them and I'll reconnect. So I have this really positive association with this particular glass. And moments ago when I pulled this phone away and it shattered, there wasn't any grief, any sadness of, oh no, not the glass that I have nice feelings with. It was a... Isn't it funny that on the day that I wake up and make a commitment to myself of sobriety, and that I do so with joy and enthusiasm, that literally the only wine glass in the house, one that I'd already made steps to commit to using less of, shattered and broke. What does that mean? Well, it means whatever I want it to mean. And I'm taking it to mean that my choice in sobriety is validated, that I, that the universe perhaps is conspiring towards my interests in, 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 in 
drinking less and to making it not really an option for me because I, I I'm not really I'm this is gonna go I'm throwing this out I'm not gonna try and it's not happening yeah this is done <laughs> and again that I felt this instant relief how cool is that let me put this dangerous thing back upside down <laughs> this now stabbing device huh these things are things that I could easily convert into metaphors and metaphors that serve me. So I will. Now, these metaphors that we might bring into our life can be extremely powerful. You may choose to notice something might have happened around you, like uh, uh, someone didn't, I don't know, you found a Valentine's Day card in the gutter, all crunk, crinkled up and scrunched up, and you, you know, might be all tattered and manky, and you might pick it up and go, oh, this means, it's a metaphor, it represents how I'll never find love. That could be a metaphor for that. And does that serve you? I, I, I doubt it. Therefore, I would encourage you not to pick up that metaphor. However, if you are walking along, you're like, oh God, I'd love to be in a beautiful, wonderful relationship in this Valentine's Day card flew through the air and slapped you in the face and had this wonderful poem written to someone. Maybe not you, but to someone. You could pick that up and go, wow, this means, oh wow, I'll find that love, I'll find that person, that connection, yay. You could use that. So I said at the beginning that everything is a metaphor. What I really should have said is that everything could be a metaphor if you choose it to be, if choosing it to be would serve you. And if that's the case, I encourage you to do so. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to this video. Thank you for getting this far, if you have. I genuinely appreciate this as I share things that matter to me in the hopes that they are useful in any way to you. If so, please hit like and hit subscribe. It's a small thing, but it does mean something to me and I would appreciate it. And I am recommitting to uploading a new video every single day, as was the intention when I started this channel. It may surprise you to hear in the absence I've had lately that I've still filmed a video every single day. A little while back, I had some issues with internet connection. And while I was still filming a video every day, I literally couldn't upload them. Now I could have solved those problems, but the cost of doing so at the time was just too high. I couldn't, it wasn't correct for me to justify it. So I fell very behind in the uploading side. But I'll be getting back onto that. And I will be uploading all of the things that I have filmed in the last little while. And I feel good about that. I look forward to sharing those with you. So make sure you are subscribed. Because there's a lot of content coming through. And I can't wait for you to see it. Take care, go well, and choose those metaphors wisely.